My name is Sofia Borges. I am from Brazil. I live in Sao Paulo. I was living part-time also in Paris. Now I'm back to Sao Paulo. Well, I'll tell, ask you to tell me about your work first, and then I'll ask you another question after. Okay, my work uh, in general, I think it's about uh, um, some kind of uh, philosophical uh, investigation about what an image is. And I think with the use of photography, uh, I, 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 don't, uh, I don't do photography, I use photography to understand what an image is. And uh, recently I realized that uh, uh, for many years uh, I am trying to answer a few questions and the more I work, the less I can answer these questions. Uh, and these questions are precisely what an image is and what a photography is and what is language. So I realized that since the beginning my works were not about answering a question but about raising one. So each image I use in my work, it's uh, as if it was a solid problem and I don't, uh, th there's no need to solve them. And uh, also recently I realized that the problematic about images uh, relies on the problematic about comprehension. And uh, because to see is not uh, evident. Uh, to see is to somehow to comprehend. So image is language and image is comprehension. And also I realized that what uh, attracted me so much in photography was the fact that photography is very related to the image itself, that it's the image that we produce in the back of our eyes, the first uh, uh, image. And all those second degrees images that we produce to understand those that we perceive with the eye. So understanding an image, it's, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's related to comprehend the reality. And uh, in that way, I think I use photography to build uh, a, compre a better comprehension about abstraction. But it's not abstraction in terms of uh, form, it's abstraction in terms of uh, comprehension. You have three photographs in the show. And they're very curious. They have, they're very, um, uh, I would say, um, evocative details. Um, maybe you can talk about the content of those works and, and what, it, what it is, the choices, why you made those choices and that whole process. And, to, and also a little bit about the size, because they're so, they're, so, they're actually quite, the scale is quite big. And, uh, and uh, now I'm going to try to explain something that I think uh, it will sound confused because it is. But uh, I have like, I have a bit of a certain that the images does not exist. Uh, and so how can I show something that doesn't exist? And how can I present this problem to, um, to be seen? Because what we see is depiction, is representation, is meaning. But the image is something else. It's a substance of uh, something that relays over the object. B and to make that not be invisible, it's very important that I distinguish so well the differences of uh, support of the photography, the object, the printed object paper, uh, framed, uh, and the size of that, uh, all that it's used to make you see and separate somehow the uh, different uh, layers of consistency that forms uh, this platform to show something uh, invisible that it's uh, the image, because the image uh, seeing is comprehending, so in a way um, the size and the very, um, uh, uh, I'm very paranoid with the surface of the images because they need to be uh, precise, they need to give you precise information about 
something that relates over the referent. So that's why the images are very uh, carefully treated so that they separate. And sometimes I photograph surfaces. So I need to separate all those layers of ink, of uh, collage sometimes, of uh, uh, also of layering subjects, like uh, it's an artifice, it's a representation in a museum, it's, um, it's an explanation in a museum. Everything should be uh, uh, enlarged so that we can see the things in between, the thing in between, the nothing in between all that. And uh, especially those that are uh, there, together with all the exhibition, I show it, I call it Os Nomes, except for one image. I did in one day, in one hour, in a museum. Uh, but I did like uh, 2,000 pictures from which I use it definitely uh, eight. And it's normally the, uh, the account of my choosing. So, and definitely you cannot see those images when you go to the museum. Even if I get you, I show you, look, this is where I photograph, because it's kind of, uh, uh, you know, th this, is a, this is very diff a condition of photography, the cut. And it's very, uh, it's just like in a birthday party. The cut that I do in a museum, it's the same cut that we do when we photograph anything. It's really, uh, it's really, straight n photography in that sense. So, for example, the cerveau, the brain, is, is um, a very specifically chosen detail of a museum display that you took without a tripod and exactly that. Exactly no treatment like that. after. No, nothing. Exactly, exactly like that. The only photograph I have uh, manipulated in the last uh, four years is La Tête du Cheval, that uh, it's in the exhibition. Uh, the only thing I did in that picture was erasing the writings that it was over the paper I photographed it with the name of the muscles of the head of the horse. And it's not because it was not pretty, but it was because it was too expli uh, uh, Because then I would... Uh, uh, I wanted to show explanation itself and not the, I don't want the person to think I'm explain, uh, I'm showing this, I'm showing something, showing something. One more question. The other thing that I found interesting about the, your selection of a very cryptic piece uh, framing of something that exists that's trying to explain something is you chose to include certain bits of text. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about how you uh, make those choices? Yes, texts, they appear in, in, the, in some pictures I have. It's not a very common. It's uh, actually really rare, but they do. And uh, it's in the terms of explaining, of naming, of uh, uh, separating, of uh, classification process, so the text, they help with the, to show this process uh, of uh, humanity, of trying to organize, distinguish, uh, put this, put that, this is for this, this is for that. And uh, by going to museums for so many years and looking at things and trying to understand the very consistency of things existing uh, I started to understand better the to separate meaning from things, from artifice of things, from comprehending meaning. And I think my work actually is about uh, trying to show that, trying to present all these uh, layers or all these problems with the use of something that. Uh, we have as uh, with uh, uh, no capacity of not meaning that are the images. And I mean the images uh, we receive in the eye. 
at first. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sophia.